Welcome once again to SoCo Chat, a podcast where we hear directly from county leaders, discuss the latest news, and talk about all things concerning our beautiful corner of California known as Sonoma County. Welcome. I'm your host once again, Paul Gullickson, Communications Manager for the County of Sonoma, and we thank you for joining us here on SoCo Chat. Back in 2014, when Sonoma, County, Sonoma Clean Power was formed, it became one of the first public power generation providers in the state. Now celebrating its 10-year anniversary, Sonoma Clean Power has, in the past decade, directly supported the development of more than 195 megawatts of new renewable energy and storage facilities in California, including six megawatts of solar projects here in Sonoma and Mendocino counties. And there is more to come in the next few years. Here to talk with us today about this is Miles, our Miles Horton, Legislative Policy and Communication Engagement Manager for Sonoma King Plower, and Claudia Sisamfu, Public Affairs and Advocacy Manager for Sonoma Clean Power. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> but before we get to our interview, I want to start with our trivia question for today. Our question, um, as you all know, uh, for, for today is Sonoma Clean Power provides electricity to all of the cities and the unincorporated areas of Sonoma and Mendocino counties, except for two cities, one in Sonoma County and one in Mendocino County. Which, uh, which, which these are uh, cities that have their own municipal electricity utilities. Which are the two cities? And you can explain also uh, why why uh, they have their own municipal electricity, electric utilities. If you know the answer, call us at 565-2242 or email us at publicaffairs, one word, at sonoma-county.org. And if you're correct, you'll be entered into our weekly drawing for a chance to win one of our SoCo Chat products, either a, a water flask or a mug or one of our uh, new hats we just got in. So you get to get your pick. So uh, with that, let's get on with our discussion. Welcome, Miles and, and Claudia. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks yeah. so much for having us. Thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Um, Claudia, I'm going to start with you. Sonoma Clean Power wor works behind the scenes to secure electricity that is more sustainable and often cheaper than that of uh, regular investor-owned utilities. Yet many people still don't really fully understand what Sonoma Clean Power is all about. Can you explain how it operates and, and how you work with PG&E to provide power to customers? Whoops. Yes. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and it's one we get often from our customers, um, even 10 years later. Right? Yeah, so right. our, our main purpose as an agency is to provide cleaner, um, a cleaner and cost competitive option for the physical electricity that you use in your home or business. Mm -hmm. um, so Sonoma Clean Power provides what's called electric generation services. So that's the electricity you use when you turn on the lights or plug in an appliance. Um, we're a local public agency and we serve specifically Sonoma and Mendocino counties. And that really allows us to be responsive to our local community's needs and desires when it comes to what kinds of energy sources are um, in our power mix and what types of programs or incentives they want to see from our agency. Yeah, and it gives us uh, at least some um, choice, uh, some uh, some ability to f be empowered to make some choices on yes. where our power comes from. The agency is known officially as a community choice aggregator. Can you explain what that means and what is the history of community choice aggregators uh, here in California. Yeah. So um, back in the early 2000s, California was going through an energy crisis, right? There was a lot of market manipulation. PG&E filed for their first bankruptcy. Right. Um, and there were rolling blackouts throughout California. And so the public, understandably, was furious and demanded to the state, you know, we want a solution to make sure that this never happens again. Right. So in 2002, the legislature passed a bill called AB 117 and the Community Choice Aggregation Act, I believe. And this gave cities and counties the um, ability to form their own public entities mm -hmm. to take over the purchasing rate setting and sourcing of electricity on behalf of their residents businesses and municipalities. Yeah. This also created competition for the investor and utilities for the first time right, yeah. on the electric generation side. So um, not on the delivery side. Because um, they're still involved in that. Yes. And and that relationship between Sonoma Clean Power and PG&E, right? Um, Sonoma Clean Power solely 
manages electric generation services. So that's what you'll see if you're a customer of ours. Um, PG&E and the other investor and utilities have a monopoly on the delivery side. And that's yeah. because they own um, you know, most of the transmission lines, the wires, the poles, um, all the infrastructure that connects your home to our shared electric grid. Right. So yeah. we kind of share that relationship for our customers um, in order to provide um, our customers with the cleaner power and the benefits of having a local provider. Yeah. Um, but another, you know, big thing that happened when when cities and counties were were given this ability um, was that historically for profit utilities were the only option right. um, for customers throughout California. Yeah. Um, but now this sort of default status was now given to um, not for profit public and local providers mm -hmm. if they existed within an area. So if you move into Sonoma, Mendocino counties, or you open up a new electric account, you're going to automatically served by be served um, your generation services by Sonoma Clean Power. Right. Um, and customers also have the option now to opt out if they so choose and be served by the private for-profit yeah. provider. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a choice that yeah, that but it, once again, regulate. it gave voy a residents a voice, an, op an option on yes. where was where the source of their power is coming from, right? Yeah. And the and the and the, the the agency that is our voice is Sonoma Clean Power. Miles, I'm, I'm going to turn to you now. Tell us about the 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 governance structure of Sonoma Clean Power, and and as a public agency, it is a public agency, but. Are board members elected? What 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 do the public have to say? And uh, how how can they be involved in that? Yeah, great question. Thanks. So our board consists of um, county supervisors and city council members from the different uh, cities and counties that we serve. And so each of those cities and counties will designate you know one member of their council or board to be on the board of Sonoma Clean Power. Yeah. So right now the chair of our board is uh, Supervisor Linda Hopkins okay. from Sonoma County. Right. The vice chair is a uh, council member, Brian Barnacle, from the city of Petaluma. But that, you know, that rotates between the different cities and counties. Okay. And so for members of the public that want to stay involved, um, you know, the board meets every month. We also have a community advisory committee composed of, you know, uh, ordinary citizens from our territory who uh, care about climate and energy and affordability issues. And those meetings are monthly as well, where yeah. people can just kind of weigh in and, and give us some direction. And those are open to the public. So open to the public, come in. yeah. Yeah. And what's really, you know, it's, I think is really exciting is, you know, because we are locally owned, we can get the the direction from those board members on, you know, what they're hearing from their constituents and, and what the, you know, their uh, cities and counties want to see in terms of green energy, affordability, yeah. different programs for customers. And then that really drives our mission, right? You know, yeah. that's our, our sole kind of responsibility is, is to our right. customers. I want to make a plug here for your website. I encourage people to go to Sonoma Clean Power. You got a great website, a lot of good information, a lot of great opportunities for the public to be engaged. And uh, so I'm going to give you a plug on that one. So my understanding is Sonoma Clean Power basically offers customers two options, Clean Start and Evergreen. Can you explain the difference between those two? Yeah, great. thank you. Um, so I think just to set the stage a little bit, you know, I, I think probably a lot of listeners are familiar with this, but, you know, we are a big part of the reason Sonoma Clean Power was formed is, you know, we are in a global climate crisis. Yeah. And that's caused by and large by burning fossil fuels like coal, oil and natural gas to produce energy, often electricity. And when you burn those to produce energy, um, what we found is they release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere that, uh, you know, kind of create a, a blanket over the planet, keep warmth in. And that's raising the temperature of the whole planet and driving a lot of these, you know, catastrophic fires, you know, mega droughts, extreme heat waves and other climate impacts that we're seeing. Yeah. And so globally, you know, energy use and then transportation, you know, driving cars, stuff like that are the two biggest drivers. Yeah. You know, the two, two biggest users. Our demands are going up. Yeah. Yeah. And so what's exciting is, you know, over the last 20 years or so, we've seen this revolution in clean energy that doesn't produce greenhouse gases, right? This is things like solar panels or wind turbines or geothermal power mm -hmm. that you can use to create electricity that um, that doesn't have, you know, doesn't have a negative impact on the climate. Yeah. And so Sonoma Clean Power is, you know, one of our guiding principles is delivering clean energy to our customers so that we're, you know, we're not contributing to climate change. We're actually being part of the solution here in Sonoma and Mendocino. Mm -hmm. And so our Clean Start program, that's just the default product we offer our customers. Mm -hmm. Um, we're very proud that it's 90% clean energy currently, and we'll get into that a little more later. 
but uh, 90% clean energy, California as a whole is only about 55%. So we're already doing really well. Right, and that's yeah. just the, the baseline. It's a great option. Yeah. Right. And that's like Claudia said, that's cost competitive right. with, you know, actually slightly lower than what you would get from PG&E. And then if you want to go even further, uh, and what I think is really exciting is we also have our evergreen program. You pay a small premium, but what you get is 100% clean energy around the clock, all locally sourced. We were actually the first in the country to offer this, you know, all locally sourced. That's a mix of uh, solar power and then geothermal power from mm -hmm. up at the geysers. And so that, you know, with that, you can use uh, electricity uh, at any time of the day knowing you're, you know, you're using 100% clean. Right. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, uh, Claudia um, and Miles, I'm going to hopscotch between the two of you here. I'm going to go back to you. Um, we, we just were talking about how some some of our power does come from the geysers. They're lo it's local, but obviously not all of this is local power. Where do, where does the power come from for Sonoma yeah. Clean Power? So we, we purchase power from a variety of different energy sources. Um, our power purchase agreements have directly supported the in-state development of brand new solar mm -hmm. down in the Central Valley. Um, or Central California, um, wind energy in the Altamont Pass, mm. and new battery storage throughout the state. Um, we also purchase a good amount of power from the geysers, the local geothermal facility, um, as well as large hydropower from up north in like the Washington area. Okay. Um, but we also have six local solar projects that we helped build here in Sonoma, Mendocino counties, and that power um, helps generate uh, electricity for our evergreen customers. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, I, I, we could sit here and talk about all kinds of projects you're involved in, but one in particular I want to talk about, and Miles, I'm going to turn to you. Um, you have one that's called uh, the GeoZone, um, and I know this is part of an effort to build 600 megawatts, is that right, of next generation geothermal energy for, for Sonoma and Mendocino counties? Tell me more about that. Yeah, really exciting stuff. So, um, like I mentioned, you know, most of our customers are on this clean start plan, which is about 90% clean. But, you know, our, our goal, and actually California state law as well, is that we have to get to 100% clean energy right. around the clock. Yeah. Um, what we're running into is it's really those times when there's, you know, no sun, no wind, and batteries are depleted or empty. Yeah. Well, That's when we're still relying on. We need on. to have a source 24 hours a day. Exactly, right? right? You're hitting the nail on the head. So it... Um, you know, it's those times where we're still using natural gas. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's kind of tricky about that is um, we're relying on these sort of aging natural gas plants in the L.A. area. No one's going to build a new one because the state law says, mm -hmm. you know, we have to we're get to 100%. Out. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. phasing out, right? So it, um, you know, they're sort of getting older and older, more and more expensive to maintain. And actually, I mean, if you want to hear a sort of wild statistic, what we've seen is even as the share of clean energy in our portfolio has gone up, our payments to natural gas have gone up as well. Oh, really? And so okay. it's really, it's a climate issue, but it's also an affordability problem for our customers. Huh. Okay. And so looking at this, you know, how do we get that last 10%? We identified um, next generation geothermal power as, as the right solution for us. And so this is, um, you know, like Claudia mentioned, we already use a lot of geothermal power from the geysers, you know, elsewhere, but, but that's already bought up, right? Mm -hmm. if, if we want new resources, we've got to go out and, and make it. it happen. Yeah. Mm. And so we're working with three different companies on this GeoZone initiative, uh, which is really exciting. And we're actually really the, the tip of the spear in the whole country for trying to make these technologies happen. Mm. Um, and the basic premise is if these companies, you know, come and build their technologies here in Sonoma and Mendocino counties, and we get, you know, our region gets that investment and jobs and, and all that, and they offer us, you know, first dibs on any deals that they bring to the market ultimately once it's up and running. Mm -hmm. Then we will, you know, commit to buying the power or helping them find other off takers. Mm -hmm. And we'll also help them, you know, succeed and kind of navigate some of the local right. dynamics. It encourages more of these kind of projects being built, knowing that you guys are looking for them and ready to invest. Completely right. Yeah. And so if we can do it, you know, this is a long game. I mean, this is probably a, you know, a dozen or more years from today till this is all complete. But if we can get this done, what we'll have is a pretty, you know, expansive supply of, you know, clean 24-7 energy right here in our region available to our customers. Is there a simple way to explain what next-gen geothermal is? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad you asked. Yeah, so this, so uh, conventional geothermal, like, like, like you would geysers. have up at the geysers. I think, yeah, people understand you know, that. Yeah, you know, makes sense, right? You send water down through natural fractures in the rock that, you know, the rock's really hot, the water gets heated up and then comes back up as steam and right. powers a, a turbine that generates electricity. 
So with next generation geothermal, what's really cool is it's more of a, um, a closed loop system. Mm -hmm. So one thing we identified early on, I think this is probably pretty obvious to most people is, you know, there's not some big new water supply just waiting to be right. for us to grab it, right? right? So, you know, we had to find something that uh, uses a lot less water. And so what's cool is with these new technologies, you know, one company we're working with is called Ever. They have what's called an advanced closed loop system where they just send water down in a pipe. That pipe passes through that field of really hot rock. Maybe it radiates out into a few other pipes and then they, you know, re-collide re and come back up. And then the heat is sort of extracted from the water to create mm. electricity, but the water is sent right back down. Yeah. So it's like the geothermal. It's just much more efficient and closed loop, like you said. Exactly. Yeah. And one thing, you know, so in terms of water use, there's a big advantage. And then the other thing that's really cool is um, you don't need to find those natural fractures in the rock for the um, water to move through because you, you can drill a pipe or another company we're working with has a concept where they um, artificially create those fractures. Okay. So you can do it anywhere there's solid hot rock under the surface, which is pretty common, actually. The natural fractures are really rare, but hot rock that's solid is, is pretty common. Yeah. So we have more flexibility in terms of where we can put it. And This is fascinating stuff. I, uh, I don't begin to understand it all, but uh, I think I got an inkling of it, and I appreciate it. Claudia, I'm going to jump back to you. How, how can residents find out more, and how can they stay engaged in this GeoZone effort um, uh, and help it move forward if they can. Yeah, so we do We do have a page on our website called the GeoZone um, where folks, if you're interested, can really do a deep dive into, you know, what Miles was um, talking about. Um, but we also plan on doing a lot more community town halls mm -hmm. and events. We hosted one at our customer center um, a few months ago, okay. but we're planning to do that throughout do throughout Sonoma and Mendocino County is just to to really get the word out and also provide opportunities for folks to um, not only learn more about our GeoZone effort, but also this this bigger picture and like what are the challenges that that all folks in the energy industry are are facing right now um, as we try and move away from um, you know non renewable and dirty energy towards you know this all electric renewable yeah. grid if we can. Yeah. Um, so definitely. Um, checking out the events that we're hosting. We also have a GeoZone email list that you can sign up for on our website so you'll get notified of any events coming up or any um, efforts that we're doing. Um, you can also follow us on social media um, if you're interested in coming to our board of director meetings or our community advisory committee meetings. We usually do an update on kind mm -hmm. of where we're at on the GeoZone. Um, and then also all of each of these projects as we get you know further down the line, um, both in sort of the explore, exploratory phase, um, exploratory phase, <laughs> and in like the bigger, um, if we're successful, right, the bigger development of these power plants, like right. they're all going to go through the CEQA process. Yeah. So there'll be so, plenty of times to, yes, voice, yeah, yeah, to definitely weigh in on those. Yeah, definitely encourage the, the public to stay involved in, in those and provide input because we really want to see, um, we want to see these projects be successful our, for our yeah. community, but um, it's really about making sure that, that, we as a community have ownership of these and right. and are happy with the benefits and the value that that this brings to yeah. our region. Well, it's exciting, a really exciting project. I know community engagement is a is an important thing for you all. Uh, you have another thing coming up. It's a little different. You have an art exhibit coming up uh, involving local artists. Uh, in fact, you have a reception schedule, if I have this right, October 12th, is that right? Yes. Could, would you give tell us a little bit more what this exhibit is about? Yeah, so this was actually sort of a, a passion project started by uh -huh. some members of staff and our CEO um, who really love art and also love to see um, art combined with like our love for nature and, mm -hmm. and really connected to our mission as an agency. And so this is the second year that we're doing this art exhibit. Um, we work with a local art curator to who identifies different local artists. Mm -hmm. And then um, we're lucky as staff because we get to see that art every day. You know, mm -hmm. we, there's art displayed in the hallways, in the meeting rooms, um, in the boardroom and in our break room. Um, all from different artists who have a different way of sort of portray all different mediums um, and all different ways of portraying um, nature through nature. their art. Okay. And so on Saturday, October 12th, we'll be closing the exhibits from one to four and it's open to the public. We'll have some bites and uh -huh. um, opportunities to mingle with the artists as well. So, oh, and these are all local artists, yes. right? Well, all that, local artists. That's very cool. Well, um, well, let me ask you, what else do you want? I'll ask, 
either one of you. What else do you want listeners to know about Sonoma Clean Power? We only have a few more minutes, but as you, you know, it's hard to believe it's been 10 years, but we're now going to be entering the second decade. You guys have accomplished a lot. What's what's next? What do you want residents to know? Yeah, thanks so much. Um, I, you know, maybe I'll say a few words and then Claudia can pipe in too. But, um, I, you know, I mean, so much has happened since Sonoma Clean Power was formed and 10 years ago, right? I mean, the state adopted a goal of 100% clean energy. Right. We actually just uh, just found out that the governor signed some legislation we had uh, sponsored this year to make it easier to build geothermal in California. Great. Really exciting. Yeah, fantastic. So, you know, there's been a lot of movement, but I think the thing that's remained consistent and is actually only getting more urgent is that if we're going to transition to 100% clean energy and, you know, meet our ambitious climate goals, both, uh, you know, here in, in our region and statewide and actually globally as well. You know, we really need to build clean energy yeah. at a, we're building at a very fast rate and we need to double or even triple that rate. Right. And that's what we're looking at. And, and, and that involves building public awareness too and, and uh, support. Exactly. So. Yeah. And so that's, you know, that's why we're out here sort of spreading the word is uh, we do, you know, it's projects like the GeoZone, you know, we need to, we need to make them happen and, and we need to get there, um, you know, within a yeah. sort of timely way if we're going to defeat this uh, climate challenge that we have. Right. So. Claudia mentioned it earlier, but please go to SonomaCleanPower.org slash GeoZone and uh, check it out because this, you know, this could really be our contribution to fighting climate change globally. Absolutely. You know, I think if we can incubate these new technologies here, they could be used around the world. Yeah, yeah great. Claudia, you have any yeah. thoughts? I'll just make a plug for our customer center uh -huh. right in downtown Santa Rosa. It's right next to Russian River Brewery. Um, if you haven't checked it out, uh, we really encourage you to go. Um, it's like a full-service you know, stop for customers if you have questions about your bill, um, if you want to check out financial assistance programs, um, rebates, incentives. We have all that information there. We also do fun stuff like cooking classes on induction. Um, we do like GeoZone town halls there. Um, and it's just a, it's a it's a great place just to be able to ask questions. Mm -hmm. um, it's not an Sonoma Clean Power is not an extra charge. So <laughs> um, if you want to learn more about, you know, uh, what Sonoma Clean Power does and all that we're involved in in the community. Um, we got great folks there to, to help you. And a great location. Yes. It's hard to miss. <laughs> well, Claudia, Miles, thank you so much for being here. This is a great update. We really appreciate it. We wish you all the luck. And as a thank you for being our guest, we'd like you to take one of our SoCo Chat uh, mugs oh. with us, with you as you as you leave today. And, um, and we very much appreciate you being here. So, Thank you. Thanks so much. We yeah. just so appreciate it. Well, and to our listeners, we also like to give you a chance to win one of our, our mugs or one of our water flasks or even one of our hats. It's your pick. Uh, if you get uh, the correct answer to today's trivia question, as a reminder, our question today is Sonoma Clean Power provides electricity to all the cities and the and the unincorporated areas if, of Sonoma and Mendocino counties, except for two cities, one in Sonoma and one in Mendocino County. What are those two cities? If you know... Call us at 707-565-2242 or email us at publicaffairs at sonoma-county.org. That's publicaffairs, one word, at sonoma-county.org. Submit your answer and you'll uh, we'll let you know if you are a winner. Also, if you have any comments about this or any other segment or have a suggestion for a topic for a future SoCo Chat discussion, please email us at that same address, publicaffairs at sonoma-county.org. We would love to hear from you. Thank you all, and we hope you continue to follow us uh, on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, and, of course, YouTube. We'll see you all next time. Thank you, guys. Thank you.